Greetings, friends. In our previous presentation, we saw the bold stand the great reformer Martin Luther took at the National Assembly in Worms, Germany. Refusing to deny the truths found in the Word of God, Luther solemnly declared, Unless I am convinced by the testimony of Scripture, unless I am persuaded by means of the passages I have quoted, and unless they thus render my conscience bound by the Word of God, I cannot and I will not retract, for it is unsafe for a Christian to speak against his conscience. Here I stand. I can do no other. May God help me. For a time, the entire assembly was speechless with amazement at the bravery of this one man. In the book, The Great Controversy, Ellen White describes the scene this way. Thus stood this righteous man upon the sure foundation of the Word of God. The light of heaven illuminated his countenance. His greatness and purity of character, his peace and joy of heart were manifest to all as he testified against the power of error and witness to the superiority of that faith that overcomes the world. At last, the silence was broken. If you do not retract, shouted the assembly spokesman, the emperor and the states of the empire will consult what course to adopt against an incorrigible heretic. Luther's friends trembled at these words, but the reformer calmly responded, May God be my helper, for I cannot retract nothing. After consulting together, members of the assembly decided to give Luther one more opportunity to retract. But the reformer simply responded, I have no other reply to make than that which I have already made. It was clear to all that the reformer would not be persuaded by either promises or threats to yield his conscience to the power of Rome. Luther returned to where he was staying in the city of Worms, while the Roman legate, Aleander, used all his eloquence and diplomatic skills to persuade Charles, the young German emperor, to condemn the lowly monk and maintain his friendship with mighty Rome. Aleander's words were powerful, and the next day the emperor announced to the National Assembly his determination to maintain and protect the Catholic religion. I am firmly resolved to imitate the example of my ancestors, he stated. In other words, although he was familiar with the teachings of Luther and had heard his testimony, he decided to refuse the light that had been presented to him. There are many in the present day thus clinging to the customs and traditions of their fathers, wrote Ellen White. When the Lord sends them additional light, they refuse to accept it. We shall not be approved by God in looking to the example of our fathers to determine our duty instead of searching the word of truth for ourselves. Once the emperor announced his decision to uphold the Roman church, Luther's safety was immediately put into jeopardy. Some urged he be arrested immediately, while others, including the emperor himself, insisted Luther's safe conduct be honored. However, those favoring Rome prevailed upon the emperor to issue an edict that as soon as Luther's safe conduct expired, measures would immediately be taken against him. He was denounced as Satan himself under the form of a man and dressed in a monk's frock. All persons were forbidden to harbor him, to give him food or drink, or by word or act to aid or abet him. He was to be seized and delivered to the authorities. His adherents also were to be imprisoned and their property confiscated. But God was still closely guarding his servant. 
and provided a way of escape through Frederick of Saxony, a high-ranking friend of the Reformation. In a daring rescue, Luther was snatched from his attendants as he made his way home and was quickly carried by, by horseback through the forest to the castle of Wartburg. It was there, in Wartburg, in that isolated mountain fortress where Luther carried out some of his most important and lasting work, including translating the New Testament into the German language. Although his enemies thought the reformer had been silenced, he continued his work. In addition to translating the New Testament, Luther wrote numerous tracts which were circulated throughout Germany. His enemies were astonished and confused with the tangible proof that the reformer was alive and the biblical message was still being proclaimed throughout the land. Martin Luther could say, as did the Apostle Paul in his letter to Timothy, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. We praise the Lord for the example of Paul, Martin Luther, and so many others who, through God's strength, have been faithful to His Word in spite of persecution and have carried the light forward to us today. Let's pray together just now. Father in heaven, thank you for protecting the life of Martin Luther. Thank you for inspiring him to translate the Bible. Thank you for helping him to write messages of encouragement and truth to people so their minds would be awakened to what you wish for them to know from the throne room of heaven. Understanding the Word of God is for them and for us. Lord, guide us as we now stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before, standing true and firmly for the Word of God as it reads. Thank you for this precious Word and may it sustain us into the future as we will face challenging days ahead. We thank you for the Word of God. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.